In this video, we're going to look at Android Zero Touch. We'll look at what it is, how we configure it in the Intune and Zero Touch portal, and then do a demonstration to see how it all works. So what is Android Zero Touch? Well, it's a cloud-based system provided by Google, and it's designed to enable companies to bulk enroll or onboard the Android devices into an enterprise system, which in this case for us will be Microsoft Intune. It's also designed to save time by not having to manually configure each individual device. It's secure and it's also designed to be consistent. Consistent in that you're going to be using a standard enrollment profile for each individual device. So with that, let's jump in and see how we configure it. So how do we configure this um, to enroll our Android devices? So first off, I've gone into the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. I'm going to go into Devices, then select Android, and then Enrollment, Android Enrollment. And first off, you'll see that there are four core enrollment profile types. You've got the Personal, Dedicated, Fully Managed, and then Corporate Owned with Work Profile. The one we're interested in here, and the one I'm going to demonstrate, is the one relating to Corporate Owned Fully Managed Device. So as well as the enrollment profile, you also have a number of enrollment methods. If I select this enrollment profile here, I initially need to switch it on. So it allows users to enroll corporate owned devices by switching it on. And what I'm presented with is an, both an enrollment token and a QR code. Now these are two methods in which I can enroll my device. So let's hop over to the uh, Microsoft documentation and we can see at the different methods in which you can enroll your devices. You have the NFC or near field communication, token entry, QR code and zero touch. Now as it shows there is a minimum requirement for Android OS to be version 8 so take note of that but also um, you've also got the Knox mobile enrollment and this is where I want to focus the next discussion. We're looking at configuring zero touch here and there are two effectively two ways of doing this. You have the Android or Google zero touch portal and approach but you also have the Knox mobile enrollment or KME. Now KME has been deployed and is an additional portal um, available for Samsung devices. So if you have a Samsung device and you're looking to do a zero touch, ordinarily you would look to deploy KME, which is a free portal and also allowed you to enroll devices in bulk. But we're concentrating on Android or Google zero touch here. So for that, let's have a look at the uh, Google reference for this. Um, on the Google website, you've got details about what it is but also the prerequisites. And the bits that I want to highlight here are the fact that if you have Android 9 or later, you can enroll using Android Zero Touch. If you have version 8 of Android, then you need to have a compatible device running. There is a list of compatible devices that this will work with, but basically you will need to make sure that that is the case. Or if you have a Pixel phone, you will need to have version 7 or above, which is purchased from a reseller partner. And this is the purpose of the Zero Touch enrollment. You can bulk load your devices through a reseller into those portals, which are pre-registered and allow you to automatically and seamlessly enroll those devices into your enterprise system. It's worth mentioning, as we mentioned before, that if you do have a Samsung device, which is enrolled with Samsung Knox mobile enrollment, there is a way in which you can use the Google um, Zero Touch enrollment process. The way in which you do that is you need to remove any configuration assigned to the device. Or in most cases, you might want to wipe that device in order to start again. So let's take a look at the process or steps we need to follow from the Google Zero Touch point of view. Firstly, you will manage the Zero Touch enrollment from the Google or online portal provided. You purchase your devices from a reseller who sets up the Zero Touch account for your organization and then you create a configuration in the portal. 
you will need to link your enterprise to the zero touch account this basically tells the configuration which enrollment path which enrollment profile you're going to use and we'll show that in a second and then you can go ahead and roll your devices but essentially the zero touch portal is there available for your reseller let's go into the zero touch portal and see the configuration i've got it here basically as you can see it's under partner.android.com slash zero touch and you will need to have the extra details here depending on which portal you're logging into and you won't be able to log into this without your reseller setting up an account for you within here you've got the configuration devices users and resellers so let's first look at configurations as you can see there are a number of configurations here that are linked to different MDMs the one I want to look at is this one associated with myself so I click on the edit and automatically you'll see the details populated here this relates to the connection between the zero touch portal and my particular Intune tenant and in particular I've got these DPC extras now your reseller will set this up for you he will populate this JSON file but what he will need is this token and if you remember this token is what matches my enrollment profile if I go back into my Intune tenant and I look at uh, devices Android then enrollment and I click on my corporate own fully managed user device profile you can see I've got a token here and that's where we are matching up if I go back into the zero touch portal there are additional details here too I also need to provide a supported email address now this needs to be a corporate Google account it cannot be a personal Google account it needs to be a corporate Google account and you will need to have that set up if I go back into Intune and I have a look at devices Android and then Android enrollment again and I look at my manage Google Play that's where you will see your corporate account and if you haven't already set this up and you go through the wizard of setting this up this will allow you to access and bring in applications Google registered applications into Intune which will allow you to deploy those to your devices but in order to do that you need to have a, co a corporate Google account now you can use this same account that you then connect into with your Google Zero Touch or it can be another corporate account but it needs to be a corporate account the other details that I can see on here is devices now the process in which the reseller will follow is that they once they have the IMEI details or serial number of the devices you're looking to enroll and deploy to your end users this is where they will populate and upload those devices into the portal and this will allow you to see the devices that are available for enrollment now in my particular case I've only got one device here and these others are associated with different different connections but this is where you will see those devices so let's have a recap of where we are with this enrollment process firstly within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager we have an enrollment profile set up within the Android Zero Touch portal we have a configuration set up for us we also have a device that has been pre-registered for that connection into Microsoft Intune the next thing we need to do is go ahead and do an enrollment but before we do that let's just quickly check a couple of other details so we've hopped back into the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center here now no enrollment is really useful unless you've got some applications to be enrolled onto the device so we're just going to quickly check and see what we have available so we can make sure we receive those or as part of the enrollment process so we go into apps we go into Android and then we can see a list of applications that have been introduced through the Google Play Store now in my particular case I've only allowed a few of these to be available and these will be automatically enrolled 
as part of that enrollment process. So we have the Microsoft Authenticator, we've got Microsoft Outlook, and we've got Word as well as WhatsApp Messenger. So those are the four applications we're expecting to see when we do the enrollment process. So with that said, let's go ahead and do an enrollment. Okay, so we're gonna go through a demonstration here. On the right hand side, I've just highlighted from a Google web page the actual uh, onboarding workflow. So you should be familiar with that, with the configuration we've been through. So take a read through that. But basically on the left hand side, I'm mirroring my Android device. This is a Sony Xperia device. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't compatible with my capture card. So I've had to record it uh, screen to screen. The first couple of pages are pretty much determined by the uh, the version or the Android device that you've got uh, and the manufacturer that's deployed it. So let's go through this. It's going to ask me for my Wi-Fi, so I'm going to connect to my personal Wi-Fi and get up and running that way. Then what it's going to do is going to do some updates, but check to see whether this device is registered anywhere in order to go through an enterprise enrollment rather than a personal enrollment process. As you can see, it's been picked up by the Android Zero Touch portal here. And I know that because the fact that it's showing Andy Jones test and that's the configuration that's set up within the portal. So that's a good sign. We accept and continue. And then it's going to try and do, start the process of setting up the device. And this could take a few minutes. As you can see, um, it's prompting me for those Google services. So I'll scroll through these screens and then hit the continue. Now it's going to go through and do some updating on the device and see what's available and what needs to be updated. It's so wanting me to install Chrome um, initially for this, so I'm going to accept that and continue. And now it's actually prompting me to put my uh, enterprise credentials in or sign in account in order to progress and see what available options there are for downloading. So I entered Joni, uh, Joni S here as you know, that's the account I've been using for this whole configuration so we're going to use that account here. We enter her password. So as you can see it's now going to go and check the um, Microsoft portal, it's picked up Move to Modern which is my tenant and it should now be picking up and doing updates from that tenant and what's been configured for it. The first configuration step it's going to go through, it's going to look to set this up um, as part of the set the screen lock. Then it's going to prompt me for the option for my login. Now I'm going to pick um, continue without fingerprint here, I just want to put a pin in. Now I've set up a six digit pin as part of my configuration and that's by adding those six digits it's confirmed that that's correct. If I'd have put eight or specified eight I would have had to put eight digits in before it would confirm and allow me to continue. The next step is going to go through is actually going to see what applications are configured for installation on the device. So we're going to go through that process. And as you can see, it's picking up the required apps uh, as part of the Android enrollment. I do need to install Microsoft Intune and the Authenticator by default. It needs that as part of the enrollment process. But it's also picking up the other applications. So you can see there additional apps, WhatsApp and uh, Microsoft Word, for example. These are the apps that we showed within the portal. At this point, it's established, it knows what applications it wants to install, and it wants me to register the device. Now it's gonna uh, sign in with my account that I've already put in, 
and it will probably pr it will prompt me for my password again. So I'll enter my password and then register. It's now downloading and pulling all the information from the Intune portal for all the policy settings applications that um, I've selected as part of this onboarding. by hitting the next here it will register the device and then prompt me for a category now I've set up two categories within Intune um, so that I can then filter the devices into specific groups so it will do that for me At this stage, it should be pulling down all the necessary information and then it will kick into the home screen of the device and I should be able to see the applications deployed and, and the device onboarded. And there you have it. The device is onboarded, it's registered and we should have the applications installed. And that finishes the demonstration here. So the last thing I want to do here is just pop back into the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and show you how the device has been registered and clarify some of the details around that device enrollment. So if I go into Devices, then Android, I can look at, automatically I can see I've got one device that is fully managed here. I've not got any other Android devices, so that must be the same one. If I go into uh, Android devices, I've got that one device, okay? Now, if you remember, I used Joni S. It's given it a device name because I don't have a device template, naming template in place, so it's used that as a name. It's also shown that it's compliant and the OS is fully managed. If you remember, we deployed a fully managed um, profile to this device, so that that's uh, showing correctly click on the actual device itself it'll give you more drill down and give you more details okay so i can look at the properties and automatically if you remember through the demo i selected the zero touch category i've got a couple of categories set up it's a corporate owned uh, device and the primary user is journey sherman again i can drill down further and look at the operating system if i want to and look at some finer details um, and I can then look at what compliance policies I've got a couple of compliance policies deployed they're compliant so that's successfully delivered um, in terms of a configuration there was one configuration setting that I deployed to it and then finally I can look at the managed apps and if you remember these are the the applications that we showed initially before we went through the demonstration so that's all there is for this video hopefully you found it useful and we'll see you again soon.